Congrats to the Baltimore Ravens. You guys suck, but you won the Super Bowl. Coffee on a Tuesday and Vlog 48. So when I finished the sixth grade and was ready to make the big move to junior high, my parents said, you know, Evan, elementary school was easy, but next year, junior high, it's not gonna be so easy. Next year is gonna be hard. So I steeled my 11 year old self and braced for junior high with a certain fear and expectation that life had so far been a light breeze, but now that was over. There was going to be a certain fundamental change in things and that change would be for the worse. Well, seventh grade came and seventh grade went and when I opened my eyes, everything was still pretty simple and pretty easy. Things really hadn't changed. That summer, my parents said, you know, Evan, seventh grade was easy, but eighth grade, whoa, things are gonna get serious now, get ready. Eighth grade came and went. That summer, my parents warned me about high school, but by that time, I had come to believe that they were pretty unreliable sources in this particular field. Nonetheless, they kept saying so every year through high school and college, and every year I couldn't help but almost believe them. But every year, they were wrong. Now, to be very clear, I am not implying in any way that I'm gifted or smarter than the average person. The whole point of the nerd writer is that I'm not. But I never did do much work in school. I never did try very hard. I found, despite my parents' warnings, that I didn't need to. I often joke with friends that in school, I studied the teachers and not the subjects. And it's true, if I deconstructed the personalities of the grade givers, of how they worded tests and awarded points, I could construct my own personality and word my own answers in a way that was complimentary. And that's how I got through. I think I saw, even at a young age, that reality was fluid. It was inconstant, which made it flexible. A huge number of the rules of society were convention. They were as alterable as people were persuadable. At the risk of self-psychoanalysis, I think this comes in large part from my dad, who is, in a word, incorrigible. He's a born haggler, unwilling to believe that something can't be done until he's tried it himself. It's a great quality. But enough about me. Is this just all in my head, or is there some truth to this idea. Well, in the end, what we're really talking about is evolution. We're talking about intuition, reason, morality. We're talking about the way people work. Early in Plato's Republic, a dialogue about justice and the perfect society, the precocious young Glaucon puts a question to Socrates, worded in the popular would you rather style, it's this. Would you rather be an honest and fair person and have everyone believe that you're a liar and a douchebag, or would you rather be a liar and a douchebag and have everyone believe that you're a fair and honest and wonderful person? Now, it's Plato's prerogative to prove to Glaucon that being good is better than seeming good, that our minds are perfect perfect reasoning machines meant to find truth and master the lowly passions, despite the reputational cost, and that in truth is happiness. Glaucon, like a good little bitch, is eventually brought around, but to be fair, Socrates is a master debater, and what he's saying sounds good. But the reality of humanity is somewhat different than Plato's idea of it. The truth about us is that our minds are less equipped for reasoning than they are for justification. A number of studies by moral psychologists like Robert Zions, Howard Margolis, and Jonathan Haidt show us that intuitions and emotions rule. That when in contact with anything, we react instantaneously for or against that thing. And our reason goes to work looking not for the truth, but for a way to justify what we've already decided. Ever try telling someone they're wrong about something flat out? Well, your tone has already defeated your purpose. If that person senses confrontation, their whole being will turn away from you. The smart little politician in their head, the reason that Plato imagines is working to find the truth, instead goes to work finding the reasons why you're wrong. We've evolved to become outstanding adept at justifying our intuitions, and it explains a lot why we argue when we're wrong, why we forgive good-looking people their flaws, and vice versa, why we lie and omit and carefully carve the versions of ourselves that we show to others. Simply, the evolutionary advantages of discovering the truth are less than the evolutionary advantages of having a good reputation. Glaucon, who in the end would rather be a liar that everyone likes, has got us pinned more accurately than even the great Plato. To know these things gives one a great power. You're likely to get more out of life if, like my dad, you haggle with reality. Addressing someone's intuitions or emotions will more readily yield the results that you want from them. People are fluid. Reality is people. Reality is fluid. There's an insidious side to this, and I think you can hear it. Essentially, we are made to be manipulated. 
And there's no shortage of that, of course, in human history, probably in your personal history, too. But along with our intuitive desire to get what we want, we are also guided by the intuitive aversion to harm. Our reasoning faculty is not a slave to our emotions, but a politician. And the best politicians, like the best people, can navigate a fluid reality of flexible rules seeking ever subtler ways not to harm the people they share the world with. And you know what harms people? Manipulation. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Tumblr, links in the description. Also, if you want to read more about moral psychology, I highly recommend The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Uh, it's a great book, extremely well written, uh, and you'll learn a little bit more about why we think the way we think. Um, so, read that, and uh, I will see you next time.